Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome to Arc Basics, a show where we break down the ABCs of how to start an arc, how to accomplish things, how to achieve things, how to be the best you possibly can be. That's right, we're going with the full ABCs of arc. A for arc, B for basic, C for, well, whatever you want it to be. C can be anything. Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Arc Basics. I'm Flinger Fu, and today we're going to be discussing arcs or natures or, you know what, the video games. Uh, little air conditioner. That's right. <laughs> we're going to be discussing the Dimetrodon. All right, now uh, what you have to know about the Dimetrodon is one, they're a pain in the butt to tame. Uh, two, they're a pain in the butt to tame. Three, they're a pain in the butt to tame. Okay, now these little guys right here. Now, the reason why they're such a pain in the butt to tame is the fact that their uh, torpor goes down super, super fast. And the higher level one you can get, the absolute better these guys are. Now, these guys, when I say they're uh, nature's air conditioner, I mean it. I mean, these guys are absolutely wicked cool when it comes to... Uh, um, regulating temperature All right now here let me uh see can i pull you out here buddy all right come on all right let's get you out here buddy come on i want to get you away from everything else come on there you go buddy all right now here let me show you what these guys can do all right let's take a look all right so right now we've got 238 i'm um, hypothermal and 251 hyperthermal all right let's go uh stand right next to these right next to this guy Give it a sec to tick. 350 and 508. 495 and 508. Yeah, these guys, they really, really, really give you a ton of insulation. And the insulation that they provide is completely dependent on their melee damage. All right, so here, let's see. Um, Here. All right, so we're at 495, 508. Now let's pump up their melee damage. Just one. 498. 506. Okay, it's fluctuating. 493. 506. Yeah. Alright, it goes up quite considerably. Now, let's see. Let's pump up a ton of melee damage. And then let's watch this thing really climb. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The entire thing is completely dependent on its melee damage. So, um, I mean, I realize that normally in the basics, I cut to, uh, you know, discuss the builds on these guys, but really when it comes down to the builds on these guys, melee damage all the way. You don't want anything else because you really aren't going to be fighting with these guys. These guys right here are your mobile guys that you want to drag across the, uh, um, over to your remote, um, Oh, raising spots, stuff like that. They're also, you know, if you don't want to have to, uh, worry about, I'm taking, uh, uh, putting down a whole ton of, uh, like, regenerate or a generator, getting a bunch of, uh, gasoline, I'm um, building a bunch of, uh, oh, air conditioner, stuff like that. These guys are your guys. All right, so, hey, let me go grab my Super Dodo, and then we're gonna go see where we can find one of these guys, and then w make sure that when you're going out to tame these guys, that you've got, all right, um, preferably the best long neck that you can get, along with, um, shocking trank darts. That is the best way to, uh, knock these guys out. But if you don't have that, yeah, you can do it with, a uh, regular crossbow and then trank darts. But, another thing you want to keep in mind is, see this high torpor stat on them? They generally have pretty low health, so you want to make sure if you're using a crossbow, take it easy on them. Yeah, I'd make sure that I had, a, a really good long neck and shocking trank darts. That's kind of like the best go-to one that you really want. But if you don't have that, go with, uh, I mean, you can do this with a regular long neck and also trank darts that won't give you nearly as much damage as a crossbow, um, will. But, yeah. Just know that if you're going out to Metrodon taming, that you're gonna need that. Plus, also, like I said earlier, their torpor is going to plummet. And when I say plummet, I mean you turn around and these guys are going to be, uh, completely drained of all torpor it's that quick these guys um the only one that even slightly compares with how fast their torpor goes is the giga and the um uh, the gallimimus but i have I, I would reckon to say that these guys are probably a lot faster with reducing their torpor when they're lowering down so you want to make sure make sure make sure that you have at least 500 or 600 narcotics on you because trust me you're going to need it. And that's really the only thing. Um, also, um, it takes Quetzal Kibble as well. We haven't covered Quetzal in uh, um, 
Oh, the basics, yeah. I fully intend on doing that. I do have some Quetzal Kibble. I'm not gonna fully tame one with Quetzal Kibble. I'm going to, uh, um, grab some, uh, mutton. That was weird. Alright, I'm gonna grab some mutton, I'm gonna grab some prime meat, I'm- I think we're- what we're- I'm gonna try to do is see the differences between each one, just so you know exactly how much, um, they get from each different one. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty dramatic. So where if you do have access to Quetzal Kibble, make sure you bring some with you. I'm not bringing a lot, I'm only bringing three, uh, because I don't want to fully tame one up with Quetzal Kibble, because I also want to see, you know, exactly what prime meat- prime- the difference between prime meat and uh, Quetzal Kibble is the main one I want to look at because when you're going out and about, I mean, yeah, if you carry around mutton, yeah, it's kind of cool, yeah, but, you know, it spoils, all right? And uh, prime meat you can get anywhere. So, yeah, I, I, I'm more worried about prime meat than mutton on this one right here. All right, so, hey, let's go uh, grab Super Dodo. Let's go head over to the swamp because that's where we find these guys, and I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, now the best spot to actually find these guys is over here on the uh, completely east side of the island. These are this is the spot that I've noticed is the best spot for finding um, Demetrodons. Okay, here let me show you. Um, uh, right there, way over here on this little inlet, this little section of swamp. This is the best one. I mean, yeah, you can find it over. You can find them over the other section of the swamp, but this one right here, I've had the best luck with being able to find them. You just see them all down here in the water, but you want to make sure that, I mean, with the capros and everything like that, that you don't just kind of, you know, pop down in, just without thinking too much about it, because... There's piranha in them gnar waters. Alright, but yeah, and also, like, this little section right here is generally the best one. Uh, if you don't see any right when you get here, just clear out everything. I mean, that's really the best thing to do, is just clear everything out. And then come back. Okay, I already see one over here. Yeah, right here. Thank you. Yoink. What level are you? You're level 25. All right, cool. You will do just perfect for the instruction purposes. The demonstration purpose. So, yeah. All right, so now I'm just going to take this guy. I'm just going to pick him up with an Argent. Um, you can tame them on the ground. I would be careful doing that. Um, just out in the open. I mean, you could just backtrack and just um, let these guys uh, kind of... You know, you can kind of kite them around like you would uh, uh, an Ankylo or a Dodicarus, stuff like that. Because they're not, they're not really the fastest guys. So you can just kind of back up if you have a decent movement speed and just shoot them in the face as you go. But, it, since they're swamp-bound people, uh, yeah, swamp-bound dinos, it means that you're pretty much going to have to worry about Capros, Sarcos, uh, Piranha, stuff like that. Yeah, leeches are also a big deal. Yeah, so if you're going to do it in the swamp, just make sure... That you, uh, you know, you, you plan accordingly and then you clear everything out. So now I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to go drop this guy off over my taming pen over there. And before I knock him out, I'm going to go get a ton of prime meat and just let it sit on my bird. My bird is going to be my refrigerator for my prime meat while I'm knocking this guy out. That way there, I already have the prime on hand before he gets even a sliver of torpor. Because trust me, it's important that you do it that way. Alright, so now that I've thoroughly, uh, you know, removed the, uh, vicious Bronto menace from my area, <laughs> I'm gonna head back over to my taming pen, where I've got this guy just kind of just chilling out in here, and then also I'm gonna make sure that everything around me is completely clear, just like I would, um, just about any tame. Alright, let's see. Come here, dude. You're great colors, but I don't want you, man. Yeah, later, dude. Suck it. Alright, uh, over raptor, what else is around here? Any raptors? Alright, seriously, any raptors in the air? Yeah. Suck it, dude. Just suck it, alright? Later, raptor. Oh, you're 145 raptor. Still, you can still suck it, stupid raptor. Alright, so yeah, um, let's pop down over here. Now that we've cleared the, uh, raptor menace from the, uh, Bronto menace area. I don't know, they were probably working in, uh, in cahoots. I'm not sure. I just know that I've got plenty of prime meat on me, and that's what matters. Alright, so yeah, um, although, before I do, um, before I, uh, oh, uh, before I put the Quetzal Kibble on him, I'm gonna make sure that, uh, I, j I wanna see how much one, um, oh, prime meat gives him. So I'm going to put a few prime meat on him, and then after he eats a prime meat, I'm going to uh, get him to eat a Quetzal Kibble. And I'm pretty sure with this low level, one Quetzal Kibble, maybe two Quetzal Kibble will finish him off. But yeah, all right. 
Bam, dude. All right, yeah, suck it, man. All right, and these guys have got a ton of torpor, so yeah, you want to be very careful of it. But also remember, very little hit points. Are you out already? No, you're not out already. You're just playing possum, man. Yeah, I saw you. I know your games. Okay, now you're out. All right, cool. All right, so now notice this. Being his torpor already plummeting. Okay, now here's the plan for um, when these guys, when their torpor is going down really fast. And this works for just about anyone. Um, any dino. You want to make sure their torpor goes down to right about right here, and as soon as it goes right there, you want to just pump them full of narcotics. That way there, because when they go, when their torpor goes back up, it goes back up much slower than it's going down, but also remember, if it's not going down, it's going up, and if it's not going up, it's going down. So we want to make sure that it goes up right there. Right there we go. So now I just put uh, 55 narcotics in him. This guy's going to be asleep for a little bit. But notice how his torpor is going up so much slower. But he's not losing torpor while this is going. Because he's going to go up the entire amount of torpor that we gave him without going down any. So he's going to wait to lose torpor until actually when it starts going down. So now we can actually take a break to go get our prime meat from Super Dodo. Alright, we'll take this. We'll throw this on you. All right, and then we'll just uh, take a look and see how you're doing. All right, so now, and you notice his food is going down super, super slow. Yeah, so we're going to be here for a little bit, which is very important why we brought the narcotics. We never would have been able to tame this guy if we didn't have the narcotics. Yeah, it's, it, it's bad. Okay, so just make sure that you know that their torpor goes down super fast. All right, so I'm going to get this guy to eat, and then I'm going to bring you guys back just to see how much uh, he gets off this. I mean, I realize I have increased uh, rates on this for taming, but yeah. All right, so the first one gave him 48, and I'm running at uh, four times taming on this. So actually, three or four, four times taming on this. So yeah, it would have given him 12%. So yeah, want to make sure that you know he is well taken care of. Because you're going to be here for a while. Make sure that you've got plenty of prime meat. Make sure that while, um, you know, while you have to go get more prime meat, or say if you're going to starve him out, the only way you can leave this guy is directly right after you pumped a bunch of narcotics in him. And notice he's still going up right now from the first initial bit of 55 narcotics that we're going, which is why you want to make sure that he loses so much torpor. Because if you start doing this back and forth battle where you give him like five narcotics, 10 narcotics, the moment he starts lowering, you're not going to be getting that much leeway. You're still going to be, you're going to be trapped here. You're going to be stuck here, sitting here having to babysit the Metrodon. And this holds true for just about every dino that's that you tame the Gallimimuses and the Gigas. This is how I do it when I do that, is I make sure that um, their torpor goes down to right about here, right about the R or the P. I don't want to go down too far because, you know, it could go down too far. And then as soon as it hits there, I will give them, if, if it's like a Giga, I'll give them like three or 400 narcotics right off the bat. And that way there, it, they're going to gain just an absolute ton of um, torpor. And if it's a if it's a Gallimimus, I'll let them go down, and then I'll probably, depending on how much torpor they have, they generally don't have nearly as much torpor as these guys. And yeah, that's what you get, man. You serious? Suck it, Raptor. All right. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, these guys don't um, normally are. Gallimimuses don't normally have nearly as much uh, um, torpor as these guys, or especially Gigas. Which is why, you know, I'll, I'll let them go way down below, and then I'll give them probably about 20 or 30, maybe 40 narcotics to fill them all the way back up to full. You notice this guy right here, he's going back up to full with how many narcotics we gave them. Um, and he's going to start dropping here pretty soon, which is now is the time I really, really, really want to pay attention to him. All right, come on, buddy. All right, but yeah, he's going to eat one more time. And I just want to make sure that I let him ride out as much torpor as possible so I'm not wasting narcotics on him. And when I say riding out his torpor... All right, here, let me get out the old pointer. All right, when I say riding out his torpor, because his torpor is going to start plummeting super fast, and then his food is going down along with it. Yeah, um, the kibble is going to... It's like 70 food, which means he still has 24 more food. But while his torpor is plummeting down, I want to make sure that he's going to... Um, that he, um, he'll eat 
before his torpor goes down. Even though I don't plan on giving him too much narcotics. You see how fast this is going right here? Yeah, that's going fast. I'm gonna have to give him a few narcotics, maybe five, maybe ten, just so where he can get enough, so where his food goes down enough, so where he eats that one piece of kibble. But now, I don't want to give him too much narcotics, because I don't want to waste any. I mean, waste not, what not, right? All right, let's wait till it gets down a little bit. There we go. All right, there's ten. All right, now he's not going to get that much torpor. He's only going to get 750 torpor off of that. Uh, um, actually, he's not even going to get that. He's only going to get, uh, yeah, 350 torpor off that. So I want to pay very close attention that uh, uh, he's not going to... You know, his to he's going to eat this before it starts going back down. Because if I'm not here ready to give him more um, narcotics, if I didn't time this just properly, then it, it everything's going to go bad. And he's going to get up and he's going to eat everything, plus the narcotics in his inventory. And then I'll have to knock him back out again. And everybody's going to have a bad day. And I don't like having a bad day. I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to have a bad day. Because if I have to shoot him in the face, it's going to hurt. Because, I mean, he's only got 335 health. And I'm going to shoot him in the face if it gets up. So, that's going to happen. <laughs> all right so hey uh let's get him to eat this quetzal kibble and then we'll get him up and then yeah all right all right it was 80 food for the uh um for the kibble all right so now that he's up he's only got 160 melee damage which means then also he's only got 700 health which means he's not a fighter this guy's not a fighter he is totally a lover all right so if you're not a um, fighter then I guess you have to be a lover. So we're going to take this lover dude right here, and we're going to have him get not following us. And then we're going to get in there, and we're going to pull him out with our Argentavis. And then, now we can take this guy wherever we want to, and we can uh, team him up with as many Dimetrodons as we want, as long as they're in close proximity. And then they'll be our little... Uh, um, Oh, air conditioner buddies that we can just put wherever we want. But, yeah, you can't, like, you know, pop on your shoulder. It would actually be kind of cool if you could. It'd be a little silly, but it'd be kind of cool. All right. But, yeah, let's see. Um, The only problem with these guys is the distance at which they will actually help each other. You have to picture um, they will um, go about the entire width of one foundation. If you put one in the middle of a foundation then they will pretty much go to about the um, the middle of the next foundation. That's how far they'll reach. It's not that far. But if you can strategically put them out, kind of like torches, and put them, uh, say, like uh, one here on the edge of this foundation, one on the edge of this foundation, one on the edge of this foundation, and leave this one open, you can just plop down an egg right in the middle of it, and it'll just let them hatch. All right, here, let me see if I can grab a couple of these, because I know I have some Rex eggs. Let's get you over here. Let me set this up and I'll bring you guys back so I can show you just how cool this is. All right, so now that I've got them set up just the way I want them, let's go grab a wrong button. Um, let's put this uh, right there. Thank you. Uh, I think this is the one. Yeah, right here. I've got some Rex eggs right there. Bam. All right, so let's grab the Rex eggs and let's come over here. And also, you'll see that um, I was doing a bunch of experiments here with uh, Kairuku and then also... Uh, Oh, Dimetrodons. All right, but see how I've got them set up just like this. And all you have to do is put their follow distance down on lowest, and then just kind of come up in here, and then uh, make sure that whenever they have levels, melee damage is the only one you give to them. That's it. So where they can be the best little uh, air conditioners they can. All right, now here you'll notice that now, right here in the middle of them, we've got 815 hypothermal insulation and 828 hyperthermal. Yeah, it, it's all cumulative. It's great. It works out so well. All right, so let's pop the, this guy right here down. Wrong button. Actually, it was the right button. I was just really bad at doing it. All right, so now it's freely incubating right here. It's just chilling out right here on the ground, and we're going to have a baby Rex egg this way. All right, I'm not going to hatch that, but yeah, this is easily one of the better ways of uh, um, taking and hatching dinos without having to build all the extra stuff, without having to grab the polymer, without having to grab the metal, anything like that. You can just easily and quickly... Um, move to a spot. Say if you were um, breeding Rexes for boss fights, you could just move these guys over um, around over there, hatch the stuff right there. You'd never have to worry about it. And also say uh, for the uh, um, overseer fights up there and just about anywhere else on the maps, on Ragnarok, on the island, on the center, any place like that. It's really effective. They also have these down in uh, Aberration, but in order to get the ones in Aberration, you kind of have to do the... Uh, 
you have to go grab a crab, go down, grab it, and then bring it back up. That's it's kind of a pain, but it's fully 100% doable, which is very, very cool. All right, so hey, if I hope, well, I think that's going to do it for all the video, um, um, all the basics on the Dimetrodon. So hey, if you like the video, if it helped you out, make sure you click that like button. I really appreciate that. And uh, if you're new around here, subscribe. I do soloing the arc, I do basics, I do all sorts of weird, wacky stuff on YouTube with Arcs for I Love Ball and other games. Yeah. All right, so hey, until next time, this is Flinger Foo. Take it easy, everybody.